Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make, it's Marco here and today I'll show you how I'm making super cool swap bases for my Cruel Boys army. It doesn't happen all the time, but uh, there are models and armies that in the lore are so tightly connected to a specific setting to make that environment an obvious and almost mandatory choice for their bases. An ultramarine army will look cool, or uncool if you don't like the ultrasmarfs, on any kind of base, but a Space Force army, for example, needs some ice and snow to deliver the Space Viking vibe. In the Age of Sigmar setting, I think instantly to the I don't have Deepkin, that are all about deep sea and water, and now we have the Cruel Boys that, in every bit of lore and active rules on the table, are all about bogs and swamps. These uh, strong themes can be a double-edged sword, because even if they quickly solve the general idea of your bases, they can easily kill the originality of your army. So in these situations, I feel the need to do something more to make my models really unique. I always had a problem with the classic water bases, where a circular pool of water seems to magically float around the figure, and on top of the ground. In nature, you never see the lateral walls of a mass of water, but only the top and its depth in transparency. So moving the water effect inside the height of the base creates instantly a realistic look, because the ground level, where the model's feet rest, is still the highest top part, and you are looking inside something like a realistic big puddle. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel. And if you want to support my work, like, comment, share, watch another video, and maybe check my Patreon page, where you can find the real-time footage of my videos, with every single little line and brushstroke. Thanks a million, guys! The main protagonists of this build are my concave insert bases. I put a lot of thinking on these beauties. And in reality the project started like an imitation of lip bases, like the ones used by Malifo and War Machine, where you can put a printed or casted insert inside the lip, without seeing its edges on top, like on these ones I made for Infinity. And with this concept in mind, the jump to water bases has been a very natural consequence. Since I never saw a product like the one I had in mind, I took the long road, modeling my own uh, 3D sculpts. Nothing super complicated, I just started from a file of standard, solid wargaming bases, and I dug a hole in the center on Cheetobox. If you own or you have access to a 3D printer, I put in the description a totally free link to my files, that covers all the shapes and sizes of the Cruel Boys models inside the Dominion box. 25, 32, 40mm and the big oval base for the boss. And of course, they cover also the order side of the set, that's all on 40mm. But you don't have to despair if you can't uh, 3D print, because only after the design work and all the test prints, I discovered that uh, Green Stuff World has in its catalog 32mm bases for water effects, exactly like mine, and soon uh, they should add uh, new sizes and shapes, so you have uh, several options to choose from. Of course, you can also cut the top of standard bases to create this kind of depth, and seal the bottom with plastic art, but that's a time-consuming option, good probably only for single models. Before moving to the artistic part of the work, here is a solution to the only real issue of these bases. I store and move my models inside magnetic boxes, usually gluing one or two powerful N52 magnets to the bottom, but uh, there is no space for that here, so I switch to magnetic foil. I'll never say again this word on YouTube, it's uh, too dangerous with my accent. <laughs> this stuff doesn't have the same pool of a fat uh, neodymium magnet, but thanks to the larger surface and the perfect contact with the tray, the models cannot really go anywhere. I started cutting these circles by hand, then on my Cricut, then again I discovered that uh, you can buy this stuff in every possible size ready to go without wasting a single minute of extra work. I'm trying to invent something new here, but with no results. <laughs> By the way, this is not a sponsor, I'm just pointing out a product that saved me some time and stress. The only upgrade I made to this system is to permanently fuse the two sides with a good amount of CA glue. The magnets are self-adhesive, and again, the pull is not so strong to leave it on the tray when you pick up the model, but uh, that kind of glues uh, quickly lose their power, especially in the bound with uh, rough plastic, so I prefer to play safe and make everything super solid. Here is my all-time favorite basing material, bark chips. 
This is the stuff you can find in public gardens and kids' playgrounds. And you can buy huge bags for almost nothing from hardware stores, gardening shops and florists. Every chip looks like a cool, realistic layered rock, full of textures and details with the right scale for gaming models, but it weighs nothing, and it's super easy to cut and drill, or you can even simply break it and shape it with your fingers. Depending on your climate, you may need to dry the chips from extra moisture, and you can do it keeping a batch a day or two under the sun, or an hour in the oven, at 60-70 Celsius degrees. The work on the troops is extremely quick. GW models are pretty easy to analyze and deconstruct, and 90% of the times they have a power pose with their feet on the edges of the bases. Knowing this, I can speed up the work and place the two main stones that will bring the feet to ground level on the outer rim, touching the edges on the diameter of the circles. The system works both for all rooks and hobgoblins, and I just add one or two extra stones wherever I feel the base is too empty. I had the temptation to put uh, some of their feet on the bottom and into the swamp's water, but uh, this way I don't lose the height and visual presence of the models, and I can create the illusion of deeper or bottomless water. Working on armies, my priority is always the general picture. The first impression that hits you when you see the full force deployed on the gaming table, and the story I can deliver with that single image. I want these bases to be eye-catching and unique, but a very good base shouldn't steal the scene from the model, being more a complement and visual support for the sculpt and paint job. That's why I usually keep their structure simple and their volume contained. The work on the heroes takes a bit more time, part because I want them to watch the horde from higher ground, and part because, like on the warboss, I have to integrate the ruins and all the extra details with the bark. I start marking his best position on the base with a sharpie, and working inside the shape, I build my volume little by little. I want to increase the angle of its pose, enhancing the idea that he's climbing down from a low hill. I can always adjust the shape and size of the bark, adding or easily taking away material, so I just put together stones until the general silhouette starts to feel right. This is a tip for all the commission painters out there. Be sure to know at least a bit the rules of the game you are painting. I've seen a ton of oversized bases on Warhammer armies that make uh, piling models very difficult. The same in War Machine Forces, making the precise measurements needed by the game almost impossible. Or even worse, very tall bases for uh, skirmish models that don't fit anymore inside buildings and terrains. So check a battle report on YouTube to understand the flow of the game before I uh, start building. When I have my rough shape, I drill holes in a couple of solid spots on the model. I add short temporary pins without using glue, and I mark their position pressing the model on the bark. Then I can glue the final pins. Add a bunch of glue on the bottom, and squeeze everything together into a solid single block. And I cut the extra length of the pins from the bottom. The contact between model and bark is far from being perfect, so I add smaller pieces to close all the gaps, and hide uneven points of contact, blending the junction under new material. You can see how the flow of model and base is much more natural and fluid now. At this point I can add grass tufts and vegetation. Again, I don't trust the original stickiness of these products, and I glue them directly to the plastic with a drop of CA glue. I close the sculpting process, adding different layers of texture compounds. I start with the K-interactive wet ground on the bottom. As you can see, it's very liquid and fluid, and when it's dry, it keeps a soft, wavy look, perfect to simulate the dirt slowly moving inside the water. Then I move to muddy ground, as a way to gently connect the rocks under and out of water. These products have a dense, creamy body, easy to control and brush on the models, and able to fuse together all the bits of bark and plastic in a very natural way, sealing obvious seams and junctions, almost like putty when you use a good amount in a single spot. 
Last application is a generic rough terrain texture for all the top parts. Applying just a thin, almost dry brushed layer, trying to preserve all the bark's texture, and just adding some extra roughness. Like working on the boss, every infantry model is pinned with 1mm wire that goes from a hole in one foot to the bark and the plastic base. One peg is more than enough, and I fix the second foot with a generous drop of CA glue. The result is monolithic, super solid, very natural and organic and all the parts will take the paint at the same time, making every single bit an integral part of the model, even from the chromatic point of view. The bases are painted with the models, using the same colors. The bottom underwater part is painted with the same green tones used for the skins, but with a more aggressive and opaque application. And I left the rocks in the black and white of the priming stage, to paint them using oil washes. When everything is painted, I can move to the final stage. The remaining open volume doesn't seem much, but at the end I used 15 ml of resin only for the 10 orc boys. So, for this kind of volumes, I strongly suggest you use a two components type of resin that dries for a chemical reaction and doesn't care too much about its thickness. I add colors to the resin using microscopic quantities of oil paints. This specific resin is mixable with uh, solvent-based products, like oils and enamels, and it really doesn't like water and water-based colors, so read well the instructions of the specific resin you are using, before adding stuff to it, to avoid really nasty surprises. Also, I know well the paints I used, their drying time and their interactions, but in your first experiments with resins, I suggest you seal the base with a solid coat of varnish, to prevent unpredictable reactions in the contact. This mix is so fluid that I can easily pour it using a dropper, and it finds its way around the rocks by itself, I just need to help the flow here and there using a toothpick, basically only in the narrowest channels, where its surface tension beats capillarity. And now, it's just a matter of waiting uh, 24 hours. I don't plan to add uh, splashes or more complicated effects for the moment, because uh, these figures are quite static, and I like the idea of them uh, slowly and stealthily moving around the still pools of the swamp. But I'll add for sure some special effects on heroes and monsters, that I'll show in their own videos working on these foundations. I hope you liked this approach to water theme bases, that of course can work for any other water setting, simply adjusting the look of the solid part of the build. Thanks to the insert bases, what is usually a tricky and messy process with honestly unrealistic results becomes simple like making a standard gaming base, and I cannot wait to see what you are going to create with these ideas. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe! Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment, and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community, or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys!